Fine drop of the leg. Thanks, Elmo. Appreciate you, brother. Surprise, surprise, huh? What's up, fam? Cheers, Ape Nation. How you guys doing? What's up, my fellow apes? It's good to see y'all. Cheers. I'm drinking some Dewars, smoking some weed. Let's go over some due diligence. Smoking on some purple punch. We're gonna have a good time over here. Double mic action, my apologies for that one. Sorry if it sounded kind of echoey for a minute there. Not quite anomaly, not that old, but uh, it's some good Dewars. What's up, Cameron? Thank you so much for your contribution, brother. You are the man. Appreciate you. Roll up, smoke them if you got them, drink them if you got them. Cheers. Yeah, you know, I had to rearrange a little bit in here because I got sick of having the bar on the other side of the room. <laughs> I got too sick of walking over there to go to the fucking bar. <laughs> Let's hold off on that. What's up, Babe Nation? Thanks for coming through, people. Damn, 100 people in the chat already. Man, you guys are fucking awesome. Thanks for coming out. That shit, keep going. I don't give a fuck. <clears throat> I 
What's up, Andre, Double May Rage, Caden, CBJ, Matt, CW, Getting Baked, Armando, Edgar, Sippin'. It's good to see you guys and girls. Thanks for coming out. What up, Jonathan? What's happening, brother? Just retweeting it out there real quick. Get people the link to the video. Good looking out, Elmo. Appreciate that. We live. Get your asses in here. Sick. Fucking love that goddamn song. Haha, <laughs> Wrench Capital. Got my boy at Ranch going. <laughs> I watch Wrench every day. If you don't watch Wrench Capital, you should. What's up, Amy? Roland Barrett? It's good to see you guys. Cheers, DJ. change my audio mix just a little bit hey Elmo you hear me all right there brother I can hear you good now kick ass thanks brother did you hear me I told uh, I invited Astro he's gonna be joining us in here a little while come on over Astro show us that fractal fucking shit man blow our minds but before before he does before our guys do I'd like to say thanks to everybody who's contributed everybody who's donated everybody who makes this channel successful thank you everybody all you guys here uh, as well, all, all, the ca all the folks here in the uh, in Boss Blunt's uh, Think Tank. Thank you very much, guys. Welcome to Wrench Capital. <laughs> Yo, a record of 4.3 million people quit their job in August. Yeah, a record of 4.3 million people who did quit their job in August. And guess what? That's not reflected on unemployment. But guess what it is fucking reflected on? The employment population ratio. Only 58% of Americans eligible for employment are fucking employed. 58 fucking percent of Americans are fucking employed. This is not unemployment. This is the real shit. Okay, unemployment is the number of people who apply because they'll qualify. The employment population ratio is how many people between the ages of 16 and 75 that are able to work are actually fucking working. And look at how goddamn low that is. Holy shit. The US, United States employment population ratio is only 58.4%. All right. That is people, the percentage of US working age people 16 and up. This is fucking trash. Our economy is in the shitter. Americans are laid off by Biden. Americans got fired or quit because of Biden's stupid plan to get everybody vaccinated and force vaccinations on, on people who don't want it because it's untested and there's no long-term studies on it. I don't have it. 
If you want it, a lot of you do, go ahead. I, I hope it works out well for you. I wish you nothing but the best. Consumer price index. What the fuck's going on here? You see this? See this fucking line? Consumer price index. This is Black Tuesday, 1929. This is Black Monday, 1989. Or the 1980s. The 2000.com bubble. Gee, can you say inflation's out of fucking control? For over 100 goddamn years? This is why your parents were able to buy a house for $25,000. Not seasonally adjusted. All urban consumers. That means people that don't live out on the farm. U.S. labor force. Treasury yields? Yeah, treasury yields being up is not good either. Current U.S. labor force participation rate. I'm not sharing it. Um, it makes me lag. If you want to see it, do me a favor and switch over. Check us out on the YouTube. Yeah, it should be live. You know what, though? No, fuck that shit. Let's do that. I'm going to share my screen. I got a badass computer. We're going to fucking share the screen. I don't give a shit. We have a Windows X uh, 2000. I got a 32 gig of RAM and a, and a uh, eight core processor running 3.8 gigahertz, liquid cooled. Damn, you're a fucking big computer, man. What do you have open, a hundred fucking tabs? Yeah, look. <laughs> and that's on one window. I got four more windows open. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, boss, have we checked the Schiller PE ratio lately? Oh, we are getting there, my brother. We are going to check the Schiller PE, uh -huh. and people are going to fucking lose their minds. Hey, Crystal Pools, thank you so much, my brother. You are too damn kind. Appreciate your support. Current U.S. labor force participation rate, 61% of people are participating. The max in 2000 was a 67 the minimum was at 58, and we are at 61.0. We are almost at the lowest ever, percentage-wise, of the U.S. working population that is in the workforce. 61.7. That is goddamn sad. Look, this is the 2010s. This is the 2000s. This is the 90s, the 80s. We haven't been this low since 1970-fucking-6. That's some shit. This is a three-month treasury rate. Oh, shit. It's so low, you can't even see it. Watch. Let me, let me minimize this a little bit. Jesus Christ. What a fucking shit show, America. There you go. Do you remember the Emily account? Yeah, brother. Can you hold that till we get to the last screen, though? That we, I want to talk about all that. Because we are alive. Right meow. I got Bone Condor. I got Emily account. The Emily account. She's a shill. I got her on lockdown. Do me a favor, hold that thought, brother. I got a couple hundred people watching us right now. Hold that thought for a little bit. Three-month treasury rate is at 0.06%. In 2011, Congressional Budget Office estimated that this would be at about 1.8 to 2 and a quarter percent. We're at 0.06. You want to, not convinced? Six-month treasury rate. 0.06 one year treasury rate 0.10 three year 0.6 five year one 10 year 1.59 20 year two percent two percent to invest your money for 20 years sounds like a great idea go for it what a great fucking investment we've got here huh 30 year treasury rate two percent Lowest ever, ever in American history. You gotta be fucking joking me. Roland Stevens, thank you very much, brother. I appreciate you very much. Good looking out. Matt Peliquin, uh, you know, how do I only have seven and a half thousand followers? Uh, I just started YouTube a couple of months ago. But uh, in reality, the algorithm is very slow at sharing. So I'd appreciate it if you guys would drop a like, drop a comment, share it on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, wherever the hell you got some pull, drop it to your people. 
This is a total debt balance for Americans in the second quarter of 2021. It's at an all-time high of housing debt of $10.76 trillion for Americans. What's up, Edevs, George, Lisa? It's good to see you, boys and girls. Thanks for coming. Non-housing debt is almost is over $4 trillion for Americans. Amer- I remember how I told you American savings is at all-time fucking lows. In the cor- first quarter of 2021, we had $4.07 trillion, And by the second quarter, we had eliminated more than half. And we have $1.97 trillion in our savings and investment accounts as Americans. That's fucking so bad. We are losing money. We are burning money left and right, trying to keep up with our rent, with our mortgages, with our bills, with our kids, with our families, everything. And inflation. We can't fucking keep doing this shit. This is a Federal Reserve Bank of New York market data dashboard. Treasury, Wednesday, I'm sorry, uh, Tuesday, October 12th. $1.367 $1.367 trillion in reverse repurchase agreements at a rate of 0.05%. That's not bad. Not bad for a day's work. How many counterparties? 79 fucking counterparties. 79 banks gave up to $80 billion apiece. Or has that been increased to $160 billion apiece? And we're looking at $1.367 trillion. Yo, thanks for subbing. Thanks for your support, everybody. Please like and share. It's the Federal Reserve economic data for the St. Louis Fed. Here's the S&P, brother. The S&P K. Schiller, Washington, Seattle, home price index, and the U.S. national home price combined with the S&P 500. Wow. Hey, guys, let me tell you something. The case Schiller was invented by a guy named Robert Schiller, a Nobel Prize winning laureate for economics. He was a genius. He accounted for the price to earnings ratio. But aside from that, you have to take into account for inflation. And that's what the case slash Schiller PE ratio is. It is a seasonally adjusted it is price versus earnings ratio accounted for inflation. The higher this number is, the more oversold things are and the, the bigger chance for a market correction. This is from 1990 up until 2000, 2020. It has never even been close to this. It's at 357.6 right now for the S&P 500. It's so fucking oversold and so overvalued and being propped up artificially that the Case-Shiller P.E. ratio accounting for inflation knows this and is showing us that it's about to fucking collapse. This is the Washington because it is extremely overvalued. For example, Washington, Seattle Home Price Index. And this is the National Home Price Index. All-time highs. All-time highs. This was a 2008 real estate bubble. Do things look better? Or do they look almost twice as bad as they did back in 08 as far as how oversold shit is? Fuck me. Holy shit. This is the evolution of the Atlanta Federal Reserve Bank. GDP now, real GDP estimate for 2021 has just been fucking dumped. Yeah, and you can't see it on the fucking screen because it's behind my fucking head. (laughs) Wow, that's how fucking low it is. That's the estimate. Not accounting for COVID-19 and social mobility, which means being able to move around. For real GDP growth based on available economic data for the current measured quarter. It was previously estimated to be at 6%. And they have dropped their estimate as of October 5th to under to about one percent one and a quarter percent the gross domestic product the amounts of output and purchasing power and and manufacturing for atlanta 
the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta has been cut from 6%, a half decent number, to under to, un, to barely 1%. Okay. Well, Kilman, thank you, brother. I'll try to take it easy. I'll cut something here to chill out on the lag. All right, my friends, it's enough in the chat. Let's move on. <laughs> What's up, David? Check this out. Real growth estimates are now 1.3 for the employment situation in wholesale trade. 1.3%. Totally slashed from their 6% projections. Non-manufacturing, 1.3. Manufacturing and auto sales, 1.3. Construction spending, 2.3. Fucking trash. Advanced economic indicators, 3.0. More garbage. Change in net, negative 86 across the board. Maximum forecast of real GDP growth uh, was 6.3. And the minimum forecast as of October 8th for the employment situation of wholesale trade is now 1.3. This is why I need to drink while I do this. I mean, I have fun here hanging out with everybody and explaining this shit. But this isn't exactly fun stuff to talk about. <laughs> and I, I think the real reason for that is because when you really understand what's happening, <laughs> it's not fucking fun. <laughs> Oil prices and global demand expectations are reaching ridiculous highs at this point, okay? They've increased, oil price increased nearly 60% since 2020 summer, right? That's pretty shit, no matter what. This is the comparison between global demand expectations in red versus oil supply expectations in gold and Brent crude in blue. As you can see, this graph only spawns from July of 2020 to the end of August of 2021. And uh, it's gone up over 60% for, for crude oil, 40% for global demand. Global demand is up 40%. Do you understand? Global demand for oil is up 40%. Well, expectations. And then the oil supply expectations is up nearly 5%. I misspoke for a second, but still. Brent, crude, global demand expectations and oil supply expectations. This is six month expectations in blue and six month accelerated, decelerated uh, for accounting year for year global inflation on the right scale. As you can see in the last 20 years, aside from after the 2008 dot com bubble, I'm sorry, the 2000, excuse me, I mixed up my crashes, the 2008 real estate crisis, it has never been higher either. What's up, Gemini? Anthony, Johnny, it's good to see you. Germany. Thanks for my buddy B-Dabs on Twitter for hitting me up and letting me know that in wholesale prices in Germany are up 13% in September. 13% year over year in September 21. That's the highest rate since 1974. After the first oil crisis due to a low base effect from last year and sharp rise in prices for raw materials, All right? Metal ore, metal ore in Germany went up 62%, 62%. Now do you see why they're having issues with blackouts and making cars, uh, solid fuels and mineral oil products are up 42%. Iron and steel up 80%. Grain, raw tobacco, seeds, and animal feed, 24%. Raw materials and live animals, 14%. And almost 1% in total for the month, in one month. 
that's fucking insanity. This things are this is crash. You can see the, this is hyperinflation setting in. When you see anything over forty to fifty percent, like used cars, iron and steel at eighty percent, mineral oil products forty two percent, solid fuels forty two percent, sixty two percent for wholesale metals and metal ores. That's hyperinflation, and it's directly correlated to supply and demand and supply chain issues. I'd like to make a quick note that the SEC has opened inquiries into Wall Street banks keeping uh, and their employees' cell phones, amongst other things. So they're conducting industry-wide regulations on communication policies, and they seek to make sure that banks are actually making sure that insider information and insider trading is not happening, which, of course, we all fucking know that it is. So the SEC enforcement announced last week uh, about these concerns and private communications uh, are obviously related to insider trading. Go ahead, brother. This is Swissport. They're one of the largest air handlers for international freight to and from Europe to America. Okay. There are currently trucks waiting at airports such as O'Hare and JFK and LA and that are that have drivers waiting to get loaded for between anywhere between 2 to 12 hours on average at the current rate because they're so over overflowing with freight and air and and not enough people to actually unload this with forklifts not enough office workers to handle the truck drivers. There's no way that they can handle all this freight, but they continue to take on more and more. And the warehouse capacity is maxed out. It is completely maxed out. Storage is 47 euros per kilo. 47 euros per kilo. So that's about 50 bucks or I'm sorry, that's about um, maybe 65 bucks or so, 65 US dollars for every two pounds. So about $32 a pound, just estimating. They no longer provide a day and a half like they used to to allow trucking companies and the distribution companies and three third party logistics and freight brokers and freight forwarders to pick up their freight anymore. Now everything is 18 hours. Storage, after arrival notification, 18 fucking hours. This is misery. I own a logistics company, a 3PL, a freight broker, as well as a trucking company. We do a lot of freight nationwide. Everything from air freight to ocean drayage, shipping containers, uh, and domestic manufacturing, as well as Canada and Mexico. This is a common occurrence. Okay, and, and the huge amounts of storage being paid at the airlines by freight forwarders, freight brokers, trucking companies, and everything else is ridiculous. Like $32 a pound if something's there for more than 18 hours. It's very hard to get drivers to the airline in the first place, let alone in under 18 hours. Okay? Let's move on. That's air freight. And... This is a, an email that I received from Jason Hilsenbeck over uh, at drayage.com. For those of you that are unaware, drayage is the act of handling shipments of ocean-related freight, whether it be on a ship or taking it off of a ship, taking it onto a uh, train or onto a truck and into a rail yard, any of the above. He let us know that in Union Pacific reported 2019 operating revenue of 21.7 billion. Union Pacific is a railroad, okay? With a net income, net means profit, of $6 billion almost. And they can't seem to find enough money to add a lift machine or ramp workers to cherry pick containers out of the, the depot, you know? This is happening with the crane operators at the store, at the ports. All right. It's happening with the depot workers at the rail yards. 
everywhere around the country and around the world. These are not fishing vessels. I have filtered this out on my own personal login with marine traffic. <coughs> Excuse me. All of these are vessels and steamships right fucking now. Fuck. There are over a hundred ships off the coast of LA waiting a, mi a month minimum to get docked. <laughs> Cheers. We're going to be so goddamn rich. Uh, no, the green ones are vessel or uh, steamship lines that are carrying ocean containers, for example, and the red ones are other vessels uh, that have other, uh, you know, logistics-related duties. But none of these are fishing ships. None of these are like rescue boats. These are all logistics-related ships. I took this picture 30 minutes ago. Now, Jason Hilsenbeck from Drage.com emailed our company. And we are one of 79 companies that he asked to report how much money we spent <laughs> in ramp storage. <laughs> let you read that for yourself. This was for August alone, all right? 79 companies reported August 1st through 31st, including mine, paying $12.478 million just in different kind of storage charges that we had to cover for customers because we couldn't get their containers out on time. Because there's no capacity. There are no chassis on which to put the containers. There are not enough truckers to handle them. There's not enough forklift drivers to fucking uh, to handle the, the containers to load them. There's not enough drivers to unload the containers. One company right here, Draymond, spent $2.5 million right here. Okay, and this is their comments. This is somebody else. They have 92 drivers. They've spent $700,000 in one month on, on storage. They said it's an absurd number, and they do nothing to make the driver dwell times. So that means detention. Any better. This company spent 600000 this company here had approximately 85 drivers running Chicago Rails and $2 million paid last month to Rails Nationwide. $2 million they paid last month nationwide in August, I should say, and 550000 to Chicago. Do you understand how bad logistics and supply chain is? If you didn't, maybe you do now. <laughs> Airline storage is ridiculous. We can't get trucks in fast enough and we can't get loaded fast enough. That's why they're, they're only giving 18 hours free now and they're making a fucking killing off it. They're charging 47 euros a kilo. Jason said in one of our correspondences, thanks, I had no idea how much is being spent and I don't think the customers realize it either. Total is over six million now. This was in August when we were still talking about it and we had only totaled up six million dollars. Uh, yeah, he's going to various magazines and companies to put this out to try to get exposure on this. Right. This is the number of ships that are out in the, around the world right now. And there's over 100 off the coast of L.A. alone with over a month sitting there before they can get unloaded or even get docked, let alone unloaded. They get docked way before they get unloaded. Once they get a dock, it takes them some time.
See, 300,000 for this company. They said a month paying storage on behalf of the customers. Here's another one. Rail shortens our last free time. Has no, cho no chassis. They have no chassis for us to get the loads out. And they don't have enough RV numbers or allocations for the empties, empty containers. So we can get more loads out of the ramp. With the equipment that we have on the street. That means street turning. Okay, we can do some funk, so we can do some creative shit if they let us, but there's not enough chassis anyway. So the lack of 40 foot chassis, this guy says, in Chicago is making things worse for us. This has been going on for a while, so you'd not like to see what we paid for storage for the year. Just in August, they spent two, two, more than a quarter million. This is what this is the cost that's being passed on to trucking companies, which is being passed on to the, the consumer. You, you, everything that you buy. Third party, keep in mind, this, this guy spent a quarter million dollars in, in August. Keep in mind, we've been trying our best to push payment on the customers, but they've had to pay a quarter million still. So that's just what their portion is. Just today, my customers paid, he said just today, September 8th, his customers paid $56,000 in storage for the containers that he's hauling tomorrow to, to, in order for, him to, for them to get released, for him to be able to pick them up. Monday, I had $100,000 worth of storage due to, due to CN Rail on six containers that his customer covered. This is a racket. It's a manufactured racket between the rail yards, the ports, and the steamship lines worldwide. This company spent 125000 alone in August. Okay, see how many? 300000 262000 I Look at how long this list is. Again, $12.5 million in one month. I'm one of these companies. We're two of these companies. Okay, we paid 30000 on behalf of our customers, but our customers paid an estimated 150000 So we're not, J, Jason's not including the 150000 and all these other numbers that they're customers. He's just including what our trucking companies have to fucking pay and our logistics companies have to pay. So for those of you that don't understand why we have to raise rates for, our, for my customers, if you don't understand why I have to raise your rates, this is fucking why. <laughs> Jesus. insane <laughs> truckers are once again trying to rally fellow drivers in a strike There are Facebook groups such as Stop the Tires 2020, TikTok accounts, truckers that are attempting slow rolls, which means driving down really slowly, slowing down the highway with just a bunch of trucks. So everyone on the highway is stuck doing 10 miles an hour behind them. Full stops means not moving and protests across the country, across the country in response to COVID-19 mandates, the vaccine mandates. All right. This is on CDLLife.com. This is a publication distributed to every truck stop in the country. <laughs> they started doing these in September and they're going to continue doing them in October. All right. So look out for these cats. And they plan really well. These are truck drivers. They know exactly what the fuck they're doing. They know how to how to handle the roads and how to meet up at the right place at the right time. All right, look. How many? Columbus, Cincinnati, everywhere. St. Louis, East St. Louis. Harrisburg, Salt Lake City, Utah. All right, these are slow rolls and stops that are going to be taking up traffic, getting drivers off the road. Drivers are protesting. It's very hard to find a truck driver to handle every shipment. And a lot of them know that, and they try to take advantage of it. Some of them we, we work with, and others we tell the fuck off because we have to maintain a proper balance as well. You know, they're taking a, some, some people are taking extreme advantage of a bad situation, uh, and all of it's being passed on to a consumer. So we try to be as ethical as possible while still being fair to both our customers and our truckers at all times. So, you know, that being said, nationwide, we're spending hundreds of millions of dollars on rail storage, on port storage. Uh, 
vessels are, are taking many months to get unloaded and travel across the country. There's not enough people to actually handle them. And Biden's vaccine mandate is, in my opinion, purposely making this worse. Air freight charges are at all time highs with all time lows on free storage hours. And now we got these motherfuckers over here. 206 House Republicans voted against raising the debt ceiling. Okay, that was today. I mean, sorry, that was on October 12th, just a few hours uh, in the evening there. And they barely, the vote, the, the vote was 219 to 206 in the House. Uh, so guess what that means? The Treasury gets $480 billion to last them through December 3rd. However, the Treasury only gets $200 billion a month and spends $500 billion a month in expenses. So, Andrew, how many people do you know have actually quit their job or got fired because of the vaccine mandate because they didn't want to get the, the vaccine? How many do you think are in healthcare? How many do you think are in office jobs? Teachers, hospitals, you know, uh, bus drivers, um, retail workers, and trucking companies. So uh, the bill's going to Biden's desk. Biden's going to pass it. And uh, what's going to happen after that? Uh, they're not going to help. Every goddamn House Republican voted against that bill because they were so upset at the ridiculous comments made by Schumer to the point where Manchin was in the background with his head tucked down, fucking with his hand on top of his head because he couldn't believe the ridiculous sight that he was seeing. And I'm absolutely right. What Schumer said to the, about the Republicans was so embarrassing and counterproductive. They're not going to help him out to get closure this time. They're not going to give them the 10 votes that they need to get cloture like they did in the past. House Republicans slammed it as a step that would unlock a wave of Democratic spending in the near future. And they've still got two other bills to pass now. So the can got kicked to December 3rd. They were only getting $480 billion for the Treasury. They got a $3.5 trillion infrastructure bill, of which less than 10% actually relates to infrastructure. The rest of it is Green New Deal bullshit, cryptocurrency regulation, $600 per month, I'm sorry, $600 minimum uh, regulation on banking deposits, which is going to fuck over anybody who works for Uber, Lyft, or any sort of, uh, you know, gig economy type work. Shit, even strippers. We should be fucking pissed. But nobody seems to fucking care. This is our debt. This is America's debt, said they said on the House floor, you know, uh, and Nancy Pelosi called the Russian roulette with the economy. But uh, it's, this is on the fucking, this is on all of them at the same time. You know, this is on all of them. McConnell specifically said, I will not be party to any future effort to mitigate the consequences of a democratic mismanagement. That means get your fucking shit together and get your 60 votes on your own. Between the Democrats and the progressives and Kamala Harris, they're probably not going to be able to fucking do it because the Republicans are not going to lend a goddamn hand. They got slapped in the face by Schumer by his fucking speech after, after, they helped, after McConnell stood up there, uh, up against the podium, and whipped 11 out of the 10 required votes. Barely made it happen. And the last two, especially Round and Blunt, were really pissed off. And you know they're going to join Ted Cruz in saying fuck you to the Republicans. Excuse me, and saying fuck you to the Democrats when it comes time to vote on this. McConnell ar argued that Democrats must employ the ardu arduous reconciliation procedure to approve a debt limit hike unilaterally, unilaterally, the same demand he's made since July. Guess what? The process allows some measures to be passed with only a simple majority, shielding it from the filibuster 60 vote threshold. Some measures, but not all. All right. That being said, They're not going to get any fucking help. And this could be now that the, and the new NSC regulations are in place, especially the pawn shop regulation, I think it's 011 or 010. Uh, this could be a good way for them to pop their, their, their bubble, their over leveraged bubble. Their $426 trillion in liabilities. 
No, should I say I should say total derivatives, not liabilities only. But the majority of their assets are going to lose value, and that's going to leave a lot of notional negative values to be realized. For those of you that don't know, that's precious metals. The investment amount in precious metals as of 2021. So maybe it seems like a safe place to invest your fucking money. That's gold right here. In the fourth quarter, in that quarter, second quarter of 2021. This is from the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, most recent report. And lastly, if you're not aware, if you take the total from the total commercial banks of $183 trillion and you add it up with their holding companies, which also need to be added up, it equals over $426 trillion in total derivatives. $426 trillion. Francisco, what's that, like 10, like 20 times the global, the gross domestic product of the world, 20 times at least in derivatives alone? Hang on a second. Let me turn on this audio yeah, here. 10, at least 10 times. 10 times, 20. 20 times the world's gross domestic product. And the majority of it is owned by JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, Citibank, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, and even a little bit by State Street, HSBC, and Bank of New York Mellon. Because you gotta remember, it's not just these numbers here. You also gotta go to their fucking holding companies. And that's them right here. Now in their holding companies, they got another 52 trillion, 43 trillion, 43 trillion, 35, 34, 10. And oh, look, we've also got Mizuho America for uh, Mizuho Americas, because they're not an American, uh, I don't know if they're an American bank. They've got 6.4 trillion as well. And they've only got 47 billion dollars in measly assets. These fucks are done for, look at these guys. SMBC America's Holdings only has $23 billion in assets and $5.17 trillion in, asset, in, in total derivatives. Now, granted, not all those derivatives have a notional negative fair value. Uh, it's probably split to where they've hedged themselves. But when the stock market crashes, what happens to those kinds of things? Gee, what happened in 2008? Right. And when the stock market fucking crashes, co companies that are shorted, like AMC and GameStop, go to the fucking moon after the margin call defaults come into play. And it's not a one or two day thing. It takes sometimes days or weeks. It's so fucking bullish. We're going to be so fucking rich. Holy shit. At least I am. I don't know about you guys. Good luck to y'all. But God damn it. This is fucking bullish if I've ever seen it. And again, you tell me. Consumer price index, all time high. Inflation is out of fucking control. U.S. employment is at... Let that one sink in for you guys if you haven't fucking seen it. Damn. That's pretty shit, huh? Don't forget the GDP now estimate. I got one more thing I want to fucking say. Yeah, I know, guys. Okay, we're back. No worries. <laughs> I was uh, moving around between uh, other sounds, so no worries, guys. We're going to be so goddamn fucking rich. This is crazy. Yo, boss one, check this out. Yeah, talk to me, brother. Yeah, let me turn on this fucking music with you right now. This shit is huge. Look on the general All right. Discord. Let's see what we got, brother. Oh my god. I got you, Astro. Sorry about that, brother. What the fuck do we have here?
Tell me about it. Huh? Tell me about it. Did you see the uh, general Discord? I'm seeing it right now. I'm looking at the video right now. I mean, the uh, graphic at the moment. It's yeah, not looking great. Yeah, basically, the equity in China is with the credit risk, meaning as credit risk increases, the equity is going shit. So this is the diverging from the credit, the increase yeah, so here. Basically, as, as the credit increases, the Whoa. That's fucking terrible. That's terrible. <laughs> okay, well, thanks for bringing this to my, my attention. But for those of you that aren't understanding what this means, uh, it basically means that uh, the Bloomberg China high yield dollar bond index is very high. And when it's that far from the SIBO China ETF volatility index, which is much lower at the moment, usually means that a massive correction is coming next. As you can see from here and here. <laughs> so we expect these to trade places pretty quickly, which means the yields for China equity are fucking decreasing quickly. That means junk bonds junk bonds great man thanks for letting me know things are looking better and better every day not what else going on over there fellas uh look in the uh D -D -D live oh, stream shit uh, oh shit what the one i put on there was from unusual wells even though it's uh uh comes well you'll see what i'm all right. Astro, you should be able to jump in, brother. Yo, that graph is crazy. I agree. For those of you that don't know, China is banning all non-government funded media. It's on. BlackRock is buying up single-family homes in middle, middle America. The average mortgage rate is 3%. BlackRock gets it for 1.4%. If massive inflation hits, the debt will be wiped out and rent prices will skyrocket. Surprise, surprise. Fed policy is benefiting the 1% again. <laughs> That's good, man. I'm not surprised in the slightest, to be honest with you. Check out that nice one. It's to be expected at this point. What's up? Oh, Pam, John. It's good to see you guys. Max, Amy, Fabian. Nah, I don't want to see anything about Gasparino. Gasparino's a little bitch. I'll tell him to go fuck himself if I see him. So I don't want to punch him in the dick, dude. I don't care about Gasparino. Well, I think what it was was young, unusual wells where it was kind of co-signing on it also. So. Let's see. Gary Gensler's meme stock report delayed over SEC government infighting. Objectives yep. involve report inclusions. Gensler is to use the report as a basis for overhaul of U.S. market structure. <laughs> All right, I'll take that. I'll take that. That's good. Whatever we can use against them, I'm fine with. I'm fine with it. No problem. Well, if they Pull this off a little bit here. Well, that'd be pretty stout. Oh, that'd be perfection. That'd be perfection. That's exactly what we need right now. So, well, I'm glad to hear it. There, uh, there was fucking, there was an actual bot, or should I say, a fake account of mine today. Somebody, somebody made. So thankfully, everybody helped me report it and get it out of there. But that, that really pissed me off. I'm like, I, I think I've, I finally made it on YouTube or on Twitter. If they're gonna be, you know, making fake accounts in my name, so it makes me feel good. <laughs> 
but I will never ask you for any crypto information or any personal information. I'll never ask anybody for any personal information. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, brother. No, you're good. I, I said when you when you uh, tweeted that, I, I immediately looked and it was already gone. Oh, okay, cool. GameStop, 741 videos. Let's see. At 741 closing time, the price went up by pi. <laughs> 741 closing time in the UK, also up by pi, 3.14%. Interesting. What does that mean? All right, watch. Seven, four, one. GDA, Global Digital Assets. NFT Capital is a company that provides institutions uh, such as GameStop with the ability to market their NFTs. The GameStop short squeeze went up by 74.1%. Let's see if I can pull this up big enough to show you here. Elmo with the goddamn crickets, bro. Are you outside? <laughs> yeah, someone has a lot of background noise. Like. <laughs> oh, come on, work with me here. GameStop announces additional board refreshment to accelerate transformation. What the fuck is with my screen that keeps changing? See that L hacking. Cohen tweeted seven times in July four times in August and one time in September. And he changed his banner to power of the power of the players. All right. Total. So seven, four, one again. And then if you don't, if you need to explain it further, buckle up as this famous line, a pregnant woman is pregnant for nine months. What is, what was nine months ago, January 11th. And what date just passed October 11th. So I'm not sure if that's accounting for the exact days because it seems like they just counted forward nine months. Uh, the, the number of the number of days like that a woman actually goes to term, but sometime between October 11th to January 11th. So the possible speculation here is that the NFT for GameStop will be announced. The NFT dividend may be announced between October 11th to January 11th. So that is what all this crazy shit about 741 is getting at, okay? For those of you that keep asking me what the hell it means. So I know it's kind of weird, but uh, who knows, man? Maybe it's, it's a little hint to the NFT dividends. We, we all know that Brian Cohen likes to hint at that kind of shit. So. Yeah, and shape. somebody said, Craig Anthony says, hey, boss, look at the shape of Ryan Cohen's beard. It's shaped like a... Shaped like a diamond. Yeah, he's got a diamond-shaped beard. You're absolutely right. So who the fuck knows, man? Who the fuck knows what's going to happen? But I thought that was really interesting. And an NFT dividend. Could you imagine an NFT dividend happening at the same time as a stock market crash due to a fucking stupid asses over here not agreeing on the debt ceiling in December because the Republicans are pissed at him now? Hey, Francisco, what are the things they can do for reconciliation? But... What are the things they can do for reconciliation? What do you mean the things they can do? For reconciliation, they could pass it with uh, less than a majority, with like a majority vote, right? If they agree I mean, on it. They can do, do reconciliation, but the problem is uh, for reconciliation, they have to put in a specific value first. Second, That's right. it can mess up the other one that they're, they're doing. Remember, they're doing the other, the build back agenda then from Biden 3.5. So basically, they're two, doing two, two different simultaneously. Two and different fucking bills. That. You're right. So, so we don't know if the Senate Parliament will say, yeah, this is okay, or you have to delay the reconciliation, the mm -hmm. build back agenda thing, uh, in order to pass first the debt ceiling, because everything can get messed up. That's fucking great, dude. I'm so happy to hear it. Holy shit. We're going to be so goddamn rich. And... Uh, the big problem is we 
are we only have until December three. So basically, by mid November, we will have all parties crying to each other, help me, blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, I want everybody to see Michael Burry's tweet. Sorry, Francisco, please. I want to hear what you had to say. I just thought you were done. Oh no, no, I'm saying uh, you will have Democratic Party crying by December, November fifteenth. They will be crying all over the place, uh, asking Republicans help, blah blah blah. And, uh, <laughs> and it will be it's fucking great. Yeah, April, April, now we get paid. And they're not going to fucking do it. They're not going to be able to do it. Watch. Because, it, listen, Schumer and Manchin were fucking complaining that the, the, when they had 11 weeks, you know, 12 weeks ago, they had 11 weeks to, to, to pass this debt ceiling, to raise the debt ceiling via reconciliation. They were crying the whole time that they did not have enough time. Now they've got less than eight weeks. They've got about seven and a half, about seven weeks. And a lot of the time is they're going to be on vacation. So how the fuck are they going to do it? If he couldn't do it with 11, how's he going to do it in seven? To pass two different bills, totaling $5 trillion, that only a small percentage is related to infrastructure. The rest is regulatory bullshit and government overreach. And at the same time, after that, raise the debt ceiling before December 8th. How the fuck are they, do they even think that's possible? It's not. Check out Michael Burry's tweets. He said, meaningful cognitive dissonance in the market. 80, 90, 100% implied volatilities on puts two years out to make around one times your money on at the money puts if the underlying, meaning GameStop or AMC, goes to zero in two years by some remarkable feat, which we all know that ain't fucking happening. This did not used to be a thing. Now it's relatively common despite an all-time bull market. This is GameStop. These are, uh, you know, at the money puts. Okay. Same here for MicroStrategy. Same here for AMC. That being said, why would anybody spend hundreds of millions of dollars on deep out of the money puts or at the money put options? Okay. And when in order for them to make a dime, to barely make one extra money, the companies would have to go to absolute zero over the course of the next two years. These are called divorced puts. They're used to hide FTDs. Okay. A hedge fund can take short interest in a stock and put it on the options chain as an at-the-money put for 2023, and it becomes an FTD for the market maker at that point. Now, as far as I know, there's only one, comp one company that is both a market maker and a hedge fund. And I don't know, but I would just guess, I would suppose that it could be them. I don't think I have to name any names. So you can see that they're getting desperate and it's getting more and more obvious, more and more obvious by the day, you know. So that being said, boys, unless you guys got any parting words, I think it's been a fun stream. I think we should end it at that. So, all right. Just want to say thank you, everybody, uh, for your support. Flacco, Be Noisy, Genesis, WOPR. Uh, unfortunately, our economy is not in the best shape. Neither is the global economy. Neither is supply chain. Uh, so uh, we have a lot of issues to deal with. And I think we're going to be absolutely fucking rich. Well, who knows? Anything's possible in that dumpster fire casino. So, thanks everybody for watching. Peace and wealth. I want my Appreciate y'all. And can you pay me my money? <laughs> Ken Griffin, where's my fucking money? <laughs> thanks everybody for your support. I want my fucking money. See you guys on the next one. Gary Gensler.